everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Fucking Podcast, where today I'm going to answer the age-old question, what the fuck is a chapbook? And I'm answering this today because this question actually comes up kind of a lot, probably because I sell a lot of chapbooks. Like, meaning I have one come out, like, every month. So, um, it's a question that, like, I feel like a lot of times when people ask or start rooting around for it, they don't want to just come out and say, like, I don't understand what a chat book is. What the fuck are you talking about? So, usually people, like, kind of, like, hint around, like, oh, this, like chapbook thing you're doing that's interesting like tell me about that like what are you doing like it it's rarely and then every once in a while someone will just say what the fuck's a chapbook <laughs> but there's usually this like kind of like like dance we do where someone doesn't want to come off looking like they don't know what the fuck they're talking about but they have no idea what a fucking chapbook is and um, don't feel bad, because a lot of people don't. I didn't for a long time. Um, I was also misinformed for a long time. I remember there was a time when I just assumed it meant um, like a chapter book, like a smaller version of that. But even though that didn't make sense, I kind of just, I'm like, well, I think that's where that came from. So it's fine. But it turns out that that's not true either. And then that's the other thing, too. Like, people get, like, they're like, well, what you're making is really just a zine, so just call it a zine, you know? And there's that. Um, and there is differences, and um, there are historical differences, and things of that nature. And so we're going to get into all that today. And um, kind of go down that road and see where it takes us. So this should be really fun and interesting. Before we get any further down this rabbit hole, let's give you some updates. First off, now that this show's everywhere, give it five stars or that equivalent to wherever the fuck you listen to this. Thank you. Please and thank you. Um, The next thing is, this is the final week unless I decide to extend the campaign. I don't know if I'm going to decide to extend the campaign or not. Um, Probably this weekend... I will do my, I'm going to do an episode on crowdfunding poetry and talk to you a little bit about that. Um, Because I did some things differently this time to see how it would go. And normally the things that I do when I do things like this, when things don't immediately start going the way I had planned, I panic and I um, change course like immediately without like letting it play out to see how it goes. And, um, so this time I did that and it kind of bit me in the ass a little bit, but, um, but we will see. So right now we are at 10 backers at $490, not quite where I wanted to be this late in the game, but this is where we are. So if you have been on the fence about, I don't know if I'm going to do this or not. I don't know if I'm going to support. Now is the time to fucking shit or get off that pot. Support. That is what, that's what's happening here. The campaign as of right now is going to end Friday, the last month, the last day of March. Okay. I have the ability to extend it. I don't know if I want to do that, Um, but I might, I don't know. I I haven't decided yet. Let me know what to do, what you guys think. I think I'm going to do a, I think I'm going to do a live stream today with uh, the Anarchy Crew peeps and see what they think and kind of have a little talk with them about it. But just get over to igg.me slash at slash your mom and find out which thing you like and get the thing you like. I think maybe I had too many options for people to pick. Maybe I should have not done that. Just made it really simple. Like, here, help do the thing go but we'll see i want to give thank yous to the people who make this show possible and who make 
your mom possible. So we're going to hit all that. So I want to give a big thank you to those beautiful fucks over there on Patreon. Thank you to Michael, to Deborah, to Cedar, to Harry. Thank you guys so much. And then over on the YouTube thank you crew, I want to give a big thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to JH, to Jan, and to our newest member over there, Deb. Thank you so much. And then in the Anarchy crew, the big swinging fucks. I want to give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim J, to Jessica, to Shaylin, to Tim G, to Chill Baby, and to Tamara. Thank you guys. You guys are flipping amazing. And to the biggest swingers over there. Oh, we're, we're calling them chappies over there in the chat book of the month club. This is going to like play into what we're talking about today. I want to give a big thank you to, you to Caitlin and to Chase. You guys are fucking amazing. Thank you guys so much. And then for the people who are supporting the Indiegogo campaign for Winner Your Mom's Sodomy Prize for Poetry, a real quick thank you to Caitlin, to JH, to Bunny, to Shaylin, to Deb, to Chase, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim, Jay, and to Brian. You guys are the things that make this fucking world go round, and I appreciate you. So thank you so much for that. And now, on with the show. Today I'm going to be talking, like I said earlier, about chat books, okay? And where they're from, what they fucking mean, what they are, the whole shabams, okay? Before we start, I want to um, give a thank you to um, some people who helped me gather this information. Shout out to uh, Book Historia on YouTube. Excellent channel. Um, they are a, a rare book antiquarian something or another and work with um, antique books and kind of brilliant. I'll just say that. And then the good folks over there on Wikipedia. Because <laughs> without you, I, I don't know what I would do. I, I have been a student of Wikipedia University for for many years. You know, the, the only place you can go to get information that you know is 100% factually accurate. But, you know, they have receipts. So you could... You could cross-reference so it's okay but one of the funniest things that book historia said it, it was right in the beginning of um her video there it was um chat books um are books that are here for a good time not a long time and i fucking started cracking up that was hysterical okay so let's get into what the fuck a chat book is so um the chap part of chat book um, this comes from the Old English word for cheap, okay? And um, there were these merchants that would, like, go door to door and just, like, stroll through villages and towns and stuff who were called chapmen because they sold inexpensive goods, you know? Like, you could get all sorts of little knick-knacky things that you would need um, and things that you would kind of want um, from this dude, which has made me totally think, like, should I be doing this? Should I get, like, one of those, like, um, look like, uh, like a cigarette girl, you know? Like the box with the strap around my neck and just walk through towns. That That's amazing. Maybe I should do that. Just spend a weekend, go door to door and see if I get shot. Um, that would be fantastic. So these chap men would um, sell all this stuff and um, the little books they would sell were these little kind of pocket sized things that did not have they, they had paper covers it wasn't like card covers or um, board covers they were just these little fucking books now as far as like page count goes on here chat books can go up to 40 pages typically um, but even back in these days, which we will talk about in a second here, um, 
they were usually in anywhere from like six to 20, 24 pages. Okay. And um, since we're talking about the, the chap men here, the term chap and um, that you call like a friend, like over in ye old England, um, comes from the word chapman. So that's kind of interesting. I didn't know that part of it. And it makes total sense. It's like, how the fuck did I not know that? This whole thing started because um, in the 17th century, the act of 1693 expanded master printers. So now there were tons of places where things could get printed. Okay. So because of this, um, people obviously take advantage right away. And so this happens all over Europe. Okay. And we'll talk about different places and what they called stuff in a minute here. Um, the other thing is, is that the works that they were putting out, like they had no copyright and typically the works that were being put out were put out anonymously, which is even like stranger, but at the same time you could understand because, um, I mean, not saying that this is what happened right there at this time, but like motherfuckers get fucking executed for all sorts of stupid shit. So, um you can see some people going, I don't know if I want to put my name on that. So because these things had no copyright and shit like that, a lot of times like people would write books that would fit in eight pages of a book that's really popular. So like if I wanted to, I don't know, like write Frankenstein in eight pages, I would just like, I would try to tell the whole story in eight pages like a cliff notes version but not even a cliff notes version it's like like if you had to tell your best friend what a movie was about you know oh and then at the end and then you do that thing. and like some some things were, were hysterical that they would actually um if they didn't like the ending of a book they would change the ending in the chapbook version of it so in the 18th century paper became cheap like cheaper to manufacture so because of this this like boosted this up um, quite a bit more. Um, literacy rates were going up. Um, there was the kids charity school movement, um, which was helping teach poor children to read and things like this. So this is like where a lot of things like Tom Thumb, Little Red Riding Hood, um, like Jack and the Beanstalk, shit like that, um, like these characters started to appear and gain popular icon status kind of thing. And then this would grow um, into the 19th and 20th centuries, Penny Dreadful and um, serialized stories. Um, the Penny Dreadfuls and um, like the American counterparts, the dime novels and shit like that, um, they would do these things where, and this is where I get off on serialization and I just think it's so much fun, but um, you tell a little bit of a story and then people have to come back like you get people hooked and people have to come back and get the next part of it and so that's how that kind of happened the thing that's crazy about these like these things cost like a penny when you got them back in the day back hundreds of years ago and now some of them like if you could even find any of them because most of them were trashed because that's what they were um, but, like, they sell for thousands of dollars now, which is just one of those things that happens. Um, so in the 19th century, the Industrial Revolution took over, and um, chapbooks kind of lost their hold because now it was pretty cheap to make books with, like, perfect binding and shit like that um, and make them more sturdy. You could charge more for them, um, and it was a better... Um, like profit margin for the printers and um, in turn this made chapbooks look like cheap imitations or reproductions or like even cheaper than they were before another thing that made it hard after this to um, continue the rise of chapbooks is that like all things the religious right um, fucks everything up and makes no one have fun and they decided that chapbooks are places where people with low morals 
um, spout ideas that might hurt you morally, you know? And so, um, you know, we can't fucking have that. So, um, this is why we can't have nice things, okay? So, this is how this goes. And then, I'm gonna guess that, I'm sure it was still happening, but it probably wasn't until the mimeograph that chapbooks became a thing again and became popular again. And the reason for this is because now it's inexpensive again to have somebody print something out. And this is basically the first like home printing that you could do. So now anyone can DIY their own shit. And this is how, and so this we're talking like late 50s here, okay, mid late 50s. This whole thing starts up again. And it takes steam, like picks up steam in the 60s. So by the 70s, there's chapbooks fucking everywhere. Like in all sorts of like, and it was mainly poetry. That's another thing that's really bizarre about all this. And my guess is that the poetry aspect of it happened because probably poets are a little more artsy to begin with. So, like, doing their own DIY thing seems a little more that would make sense. And then you look at, like, short story writers of the day. They wanted to get their shit in like big magazines and get paid and get book deals and all this other shit whereas poets I don't know if that was the same kind of thought so it makes sense that the poets would be the ones to kind of champion the um, the chapbooks but a lot of this is the the little magazines the mimeos okay like the homemade magazines that like now would be referred to as zines. And we'll talk about that in a second here too. And I've said this before, but a lot of these um, little magazines would put out chapbooks of writers that they thought um, could sell books. Like Hearse was a chapbook or a, a little magazine. And they would put out chapbooks of poets that got a lot of popularity from people. See, here's the other thing that's weird. Back in the day, let me explain how something works to you guys. Back in the day, when people liked something or didn't like something, they thought it was in their best interest to write the publisher and let them know. Okay. Nowadays, people don't fucking do that because if they really feel like bitching about anything, they'll just bitch on Twitter or something like that on social media. And then because they don't want to necessarily get into any shit, they'll just fucking subtweet to the point where you don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. And so you read someone's tweet and they're like, oh God, I read something today and I really didn't like it. I'm sad. I'm going to eat ice cream. Ugh. And you're like, what the fuck was that? Like... Was that helpful to fucking anybody? No? Oh, okay. So that that's just like a different in difference in the times. But like anyway, so all these things. The outsider would put out um like Lujan Press would put out people's books and stuff like that. Let's see, who else did one? Um Kayak. Um the Kayak Review. Like they put out a ton of chapbooks for stuff. Open Skull Press, who did Olay, put out a bunch of chapbooks for people. Um Wormwood Review a lot of times would have a chapbook like in the middle of the actual magazine part. So like, and again, this is like homemade shit, okay? So you would have like a 40-page magazine with like a 20-page chapbook in the middle on different colored paper of one writer kind of thing. So through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, I think... Poetry obviously kept the chapbook alive. Now, as this is going, like, with the rise of Xerox, like in the early 80s and shit, late 70s, early 80s, 
you have people because mimeographs were kind of a pain in the ass like you basically had to um like type out on a transparency like anyone who's older than fucking (laughs) okay so anyone who's like um age 30 and under probably has no idea what a fucking transparency is um but if you ever had overhead projectors in your fucking elementary school um a transparency is basically like a plastic piece of paper that is clear you would put that in a typewriter and type out what you want the page to look like or whatever and then you put that through the mimeo machine and it pushes ink through it onto paper and so that plastic thing becomes your master and you keep printing paper out like that so that's a fucking pain in the ass right Okay, let's just be real here. So with that said, when you get into the Xerox boom, photocopies, photocopies is like, what? And that's where I grew up um, making zines and shit with the photocopies, which is why I dig that super high contrast fucking monochrome fucking shit. Because like when I was making zines back in the day, that's what all the artwork looked like because that's all you got kind of thing. So with zines, the the DIY nature really took hold to the point where nobody gave a shit what some of these things looked like at all. It was just like, we're going to do this, I'm going to fold some paper, and you're going to suck a dick. You know what I'm saying? Whereas, um, and a lot of times with zines, like people make zines to give them away. Like, making a shit ton of money isn't like, usually like the idea of a zine when you're putting it together whereas a chapbook you're not only trying to at least make your money back for what you fucking did but hope that people will find you and want to read more of your stuff so that's kind of probably the commercial difference between a chapbook and a zine um the other thing i wanted to talk to you about before i get too far away from it um this cracked me up so like i was saying like all over europe the people were making um chat books and stuff like that in france um they were called because like again the chat book comes from england like the word chap and chat book and all that shit but all over the world people were doing the same thing at the same time but it was called different shit because they had different words for stuff so, like, in France, it was called, um, I'm not going to try to fucking pronounce shit, so I'm just going to kind of give you what I can give you. But in French, it was um, Blue Library, because all of these books um, were, like, the covers for all these books were used, they were using this blue paper that was typically used for wrapping sugar. So they could have called them sugar books, too, which actually sounds kind of cool. But um, Blue Library is what they called them. In Germany, they were called um, Volksbuch, which means people's book. Um, That's probably the closest to me speaking another language you're going to get today. In Spain, they were called um, cornel sheets or loose sheets. Because typically what they would do is just like if they had a book... They wouldn't bind it at all, and they would just fold the pages and then, like, hand you the folded pages together kind of thing, which is crazy. Um, It's so weird how things can, like, happen and then be accepted. That's fucking crazy. And what's accepted in some places is, like, what? In another place. Um, In Russia, they were known as um, Lubbock, which sounds about right. Um, The thing that cracked me up more than anything that I found through my rigorous Wikipedia researching is that, like, I don't know if this was in just Scotland or if this was all over England, but another, like, slang term for chapbooks was called bum fodder. Bum fodder. Why is that? Well, because paper has always been looked at as something good for personal hygiene when you go to the bathroom so a lot of times people would buy these books and read them 
and then go, well, after I use it, at least I could wipe with it. Which cracks me up, because I have a book called Shit Poems. <laughs> and I fucking did the same thing with it and said, hey, this paper is really soft inside. Like, you can use this. Like, like if you run out of toilet paper while you're reading, just rip a page out and wipe. So that that's, that's not a me idea. That's been around for fucking the dawn of time, dude. That's hysterical. Bum fodder. Love it. So anyway, um, I think how chapbooks kind of went the way of the buffalo, um, or there was a lull at least, is in the um, the two thousands, and mainly because of the internet. And what ends up happening here is because the internet becomes such a new fucking crazy thing, what you have is people wanting to, and I think people should always try to embrace the new technology, okay? So what you end up having here is this rise of blogging and what people end up calling online chat books or e-chaps, which to me just sounds hysterical when you say it, but it is a thing that people have done, whatever. Um, a lot of this too can be like PDFs. And what I think happened, I honestly think this is what went down. PDFs were awesome. And if you wanted to, you could just give people PDFs of your chapbooks. And if they want a print version of it, they could just print it out. Brilliant. Win-win for everybody, right? Well, then the Kindle Gold Rush happened. KDP happened. Okay. Dot Mobi files happened. EPUBs happened. And what does this do? It moves the type all over the place. Like you can't have fixed type because people read their books on different size readers and it's more for the enjoyment of the reader than the art of the artist. You see what I'm saying? So when this happened, I think this is when people were like, fuck that. I don't want to fucking put my book out like that. I'm going to fucking put it out as a fucking chat book. Like, I think that was like the actual turning point. But I feel like there were a large number of people who weren't like hip to the idea of chat books from the 90s. And so when um, they decided they didn't like ebooks. They didn't know where to go or what to do. So now we have this other thing where people don't want to make ebooks. Chapbooks sound cool if they know what it is, but they're probably just getting it confused with zines. And then because zines aren't supposed to be something you make money on or something that people take seriously, like you're like, oh, I don't want to fucking like not take my work seriously and all this other shit. And so what do you end up with? You end up with print on demand. P O fucking D. Okay. Now, print on demand is awesome, but it has huge limitations. Meaning, you get two pieces of paper to choose from, two types of paper, and two types of cardstock. And that's it. And um, you end up paying a ridiculous amount per book than you would if you were to just like order your books made. Like in a higher quantity. But most people aren't going to fucking do that. Now we have these perfect bound books that could be any size. Like up to like 750 pages. I think most places cap you at. So the idea of putting together quick and expensive books is not really happening anymore. So now you have pretty quick, but it has to get mailed to you and printed up and all that other shit. Books that are perfect bound which probably take you a lot longer to put together and probably cost more, but at the same time, they'll probably last a lot longer than your chat books, you know? I think we're in this time right now where it's possible for people to make chat books, make print-on-demand stuff, make e-chaps, do all of this shit, and be able to have some sort of success with doing that it just depends on what you want to do what you want to make what you want to put together and then on top of that um which is something we're going to talk about when i do the crowdfunding episode 
um, talking about kind of training your loyal audience into what is acceptable what is an acceptable form of reading your content if that makes any sense chat books are different from zines and here's the other thing too like people say like you could have perfect bound chat books they just i guess they would just have to be under 40 pages to me it kind of defeats the purpose of making a inexpensive saddle stitched or stapled little booklet or pamphlet or whatever but hey if that's the thing people are into doing then that's the thing people are into doing and we can't really knock them for that so um if people are making it happen then fucking hell yeah i'm on board i'm all about making it happen people so however you do that let me know and i'm really curious what you guys think about all this like did this clear shit up for you? Like, do you have a better understanding? And now that you have this better understanding, what do you think you want to do with your stuff? Okay. Like if you were to like self publish your stuff, how would you do it? And I, I bring this up because I have different people who are like in the anarchy crew and people who I talk to and shit who are wanting to do like chat books who are wanting to do um, paperbacks on Amazon who are wanting to do straight up ebooks. And there is someone else who is actually, they've made um, like PDF copies, like PDF, I guess these would be e chaps at this point, um, PDF versions of their work on their phone. Like they got some program on their phone to where they can. Um, write and design all this other crap and they're just doing it on off their phone and it looks amazing so like what kind of stuff do you want to do like where do you think you fall into this you know it's just kind of interesting shit so anyway um i think um now we're gonna get straight into the extra large butt plugs <laughs> And they're not really extra large. It's just, again, I'm going to tell you the thing I've been telling you all month. Winner your mom's sodomy prize for poetry. We need your help. We really, really do. When I started this campaign, I was wanting to try to pull $1,500 together so I could do like a small off, like a off print, off print, offset print run to make the book look amazing, use paper that I want to use, do fucking a awesome textured cover that I wanted to do right now all that's gone right now I'm just trying to be able to get um like digital printed copies of the book made okay um because I don't know like if it's going to be possible at all to get to the number that I was hoping to get to like we're almost at 500 bucks right now so um let's cross our short and curlies and make that happen guys so run over to igg.me slash at slash your mom. Link will be down below. Find a tier. You get the book. You get my chapbook runner up. You get, um, you could get an 8x10 glossy of me on the can signed. You can get me writing a letter to your mom. You can get um, different chapbook bundles of all my stuff. You could get audiobook versions. If you want to hear me lull you into a sense of amazement, you can do that. Okay? So there's all these fucking things you can get. Plus, you can get like the end of everything and fingering the mundane, my other books that I crowdfunded and shit on there too. So, yeah. Whoop! Um, there's all this shit, but time's running out. Friday's the last day unless I decide to extend this bitch. And I don't know if I want to go through this because it is very stressful on me. So anyway, with that said, I guess the next episode of this podcast will be the crowdfunding spooktacular. So if you're interested in crowdfunding poetry, make sure you come to the next episode. And other than that, I guess that is all the murder she wrote. So... Type art, everybody. And I will talk to you all later.
I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.